to the Bibli Right channel. My name is Jacqueline, and in case you're wondering, why are you sitting on the floor in an empty room that is very loud and echoey? Well, the answer to that is my husband and I moved from Houston, Texas to Nashville, Tennessee last week, and since our stuff hasn't arrived yet, I thought this would be a great opportunity to go explore some Nashville bookstores and to take you along with me. So I actually grew up just a little bit south of Nashville, but I never really ventured into Nashville when I was looking for books, so for the most part, this list is new to me. There are a few like half price books, books a million kind of stores that I've been to before, just not those locations, um, but I really did want to try and focus on some like Nashville indie bookstores. So I'm going to try and hit six different stores today, so let's do this. So I just made it to the first place, and this was actually a recommendation of one of our patrons, Alicia. Please go check out her Instagram, Court of Ivy and Ink. It is absolutely stunning, but she lives in Tennessee and said that whenever she comes up to Nashville, she visits this place. It's called McKay's, um, and it's so, from what I can tell, it is like all used books and music and electronics and things like that, so I'm super excited to go check this out. Okay, so I'm back and um, that was insane. <laughs> it is enormous. Um, it is a legit size, like a warehouse of just all used electronics and CDs, movies, vinyls, and then of course books. It was amazing. I mean, you definitely had to kind of like dig around for what you were looking for, but like I found way too many things <laughs> and spent way too much money in there but i'm so excited to show you what i got so on to place number two one down five to go let's keep going so i just made it to the next place and it is books a million and my goal for this one is to try and find what our march book buddy read poll books are going to be on our patreon so that's my goal Maybe we'll find something good in here. So I didn't find anything at Books A Million, but I did go ahead and head on over to our next bookstore. It is Rhino Booksellers, and it is a used bookstore. I have not been in yet, but I'm super excited from the pictures that I've seen online. It looks really, really cool. From what I can tell, it is a lot of like um, used instruments and vinyls and kind of like rare books and stuff like that. So we'll just have to see if I'm right, but let's go ahead and head on in.
Okay, that was without a doubt the coolest bookstore that I think I've ever been to. It was like a maze in there. Like, I think I got lost <laughs> for a while and it didn't look like it would be that big. And then it just kept going and going and there were these beautiful old leather bound books. There was a cat named Charlotte. I mean, I might go live there. I, wow, I have no words. Now I did not recognize very many of the titles in there, but like, I don't even care. It was, it was amazing. I, uh, I loved it. I cannot wait to go back. <laughs> On to the next, <laughs> three down, three more to go, something like that. Let's keep going. So I just made it to the next stop, which is Half Price Books, and I absolutely love leather bound classics, and this is my favorite place to get them. So let's go see if we can find some really pretty leather bound editions. Just made it to the next stop and this one is Parnassus Books and I am so excited because I just kind of peeked in and it is so cute! So this one is an independent bookstore so I am super excited to go check these out. When I lived in Houston I lived within walking distance of an independent bookstore called Blue Willow Bookshop and it was so cute and anytime I was having a bad day I would go there and buy myself some books. <laughs> so I'm super excited to have found another indie book story that hopefully will be my sad day. Let's go buy a book place. So let's go check it out. So I just got back from visiting a bunch of bookstores and I did go to a sixth, the bookshop that is in East Nashville. However, they did have signs that said no photography, no videography. So I didn't take any videos of the inside of the store. Um, it was super cute though. It's very, very small. So it does kind of have a little bit of a limited selection. However, the selection that they had was really, really great. Um, and yes, I am in my bathroom. <laughs> I realized how loud and echoey um, the intro is just because there's no furniture in our house at all and so it just sounds very empty because it is. So I'm hoping that this will be a little bit better so I apologize that it's going to be a little, little weird <laughs> until we get everything set up. But I did oof, end up buying some books so let's talk about the ones that I ended up getting. Most of the books in here I did buy used. I only bought books from three different stores. McKay's, which is the first one that we went to, um, Half Price Books, and then Parnassus Books. I loved every single store that I went into. Um, however, there are a few that I have a feeling I'm gonna be going back to over and over and over again. Rhino Booksellers, just because the vibe was unreal. It's I, I just, I have no words. I'm like ready to go back already. Then Parnassus Bookstop, it was just super, super cute. Um, and I really loved that it was an independent bookstore. And then I really loved McKay's as well. I It was massive. There was just such an enormous selection. And so I can definitely see myself going back there as well. So let's go through the books that I got. So to start this off, I am strictly a YA fantasy kind of gal. However, I am trying to broaden my horizons. So I sent a message in our Discord asking for romance recommendations. And let me tell you, our girl showed up. <laughs> now the bookstore that I was at at that time um, did not have a very large romance section um, and so I only ended up getting two. The first is the Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang and this was recommended by a bunch of our patrons so 
I'm excited about this one. And then the second one, one of my co-hosts over on the Big Believer podcast, LB, has read all of the Richardson series. So I went ahead and grabbed the first one, The Duke and I, which is by Julia Quinn. The next one, I literally have no idea what it's about, but I have heard so many people recommend this book. Um, I've seen it all over Bookstagram. I've heard a lot of people say that this is like some of their all-time favorites. So I grabbed it without even reading the back of it. This was, I got it from a case, so it was only $2. Um, but it is Hush Hush by Becca Fitzpatrick. Then I picked up this next one just because I have read books by both of these authors, Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner, and really enjoyed the books that they have both written. So this one is These Broken Stars. Again, I have no idea what it's about, but it was secondhand and that's $4.50. So I just thought, why not? Let's get it. <laughs> I also got Where the Dreams Descend by Janella Angelis. And this one, from what I've heard, is kind of like Magicians and Moulin Rouge. And that alone completely sold me on it. So I went ahead and picked it up. I also got Flame of the Mist by Renee Audier. I have read a couple of Renee Audier's other series. Um, the Beautiful and the Damned is one. And then also The Wrath and Dawn and The Rose and the Dagger. So when I saw this one, I just had to pick it up. I really enjoy her writing. So this one is set in feudal Japan, which I'm really, really excited about. So I definitely think that this is going to be one that jumps up to the top of my TBR. So this is a two-part one. I went ahead and picked up both Shiver and Linger by Maggie Stavater. Now I'm halfway through The Raven Cycle and I'm loving it. Um, so when I saw these today at Half Price Books, I could not get them. Um, I've heard good things, so naturally I just had to go ahead and get them. I also picked up The Star-Touched Queen by Rashani Chachki. Now, I have not read The Gilded Wolves or The Silvered Serpents yet, but again, I've heard just such incredible things about them that I have a very strong hunch that I'm going to end up loving them. And so when I saw this one, I just decided to go ahead and pick it up and add it to my list of her books to read. So this next one is actually a box set of a series that I have read before and I absolutely love. And I'm actually thinking I might do a reread pretty soon because I loved it so much. Um, but I went ahead and picked up the Lord of the Rings box set. Okay, so these last three, I am trash, trash <laughs> for beautiful leather bound books. Um, I mentioned that going into half price books and looking through their leather bound classics is one of my favorite things to do. And it's, it's bad. Um, so I found some naturally and I got them naturally. So I may have bought two editions of the same book, but they're both beautiful. <laughs> And I also love <laughs> this book, so I'm, I'm just frying it in my brain, right? Can we do that? Um, so I have this version and edition of Aesop's Fables, and then also this one. So they're different, they're different sizes, right? It's fine, right? It's not fine. <laughs> And then the last book that I got, I'm actually really excited about this one, especially if it, if it is what I think it is. And I may be 100% wrong, but I'm just like telling myself, so it's fine. Um, it is Harvard Classics of A Thousand and One Nights, um, except again, if I'm right, this is quite old. Um, the copyright says 1909 um, and like the pages are just really old and it's just really pretty. And it just makes me really happy. And so I just saw this on the shelf for $12 and I was just, I just had to get it. So this was so fun for me because I got to go out and explore a new city and also get to do things that I love and find bookstores that I could see myself going back to. So I'm super, super excited about this. Thanks so much for joining me. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you have a fantastic week. Happy reading and we'll see you next time. 